Okay, hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do how to tie a uh, sedge hook. I'm going to be tying sedge hook for you. I'll try and show you how to deal with um, patchy fur, how, the best way to cut fur. Make a deer fur patch. And it's a top dropper pattern. But it's not quite popular, and you can, it's highly buoyant, you know, it's one of them that's a very buoyant fly. Um, I've been having a lot of fun tying this one. I mean, you can tie in lots of sizes, that small goes through, and you can even get a little um, experimental with the pattern if you like. You know, you could go over. This kind of thing, but I'll get straight on with the tie. So I'm putting the device size 10 hook, wet fly hook, size 10. Um, this is quite an old hook actually. Uh, it's a partridge, Bob Church, the late Bob, Bob Church here uh, had a company. This is her. Anyway, the, the, the thread is 8 or camel. And I was going to catch it midway and take it down to the bend, touch turns. You want to stop about level with the barb, really. Now your first bunch of the other, what you can do is just separate from the skin a small amount like this and um, just lift it off, put it on your desk and just cut a little, that little bunch off, put it in your stacker. I mean this stacker I made myself but you can buy them, you can make them yourself. I pretty much made it out of a couple of paint for rolls and a penny of paintbrushes. So you give it a good stack so you get your tips nice and level. And the first bunch I'm going to put the back here. And you want the length to be pretty much equivalent to the gap, really. And then you're going to do a pin trap. Two pin traps. Three. And hold it nice and tight. And then you can let it go because what happens is they flow up like that. Then you take the waist here at the front and cut it off in a nice diagonal, you know, in this kind of angle. Try and keep it tidy. As you wouldn't tie that down and add a bit of dubbing on there. Now the dubbing I've got for this one is is like a seals for a claret seals for with a pink canton mixed in. So tilt your eyes away from yourself and put Make sure you wax plenty of wax on your string on your thread. And that's what kind of wax I use, believe it or not, it's cobbler's wax. It's a little kinder to thread. But I don't suppose it matters too much which wax you use. 
and we take a little tubing and make a tubing noodle. You don't need a lot of this, just enough to get the tail on there. And then we're going to take another bunch of DFO again, uh, come close to the skin. Lift a, lift a small bunch out, separate it off and cut very close to the skin. It just helps next time you take a bunch out, it just makes it easier upon yourself. And again, same with this, you go and stack it. It just helps get all your end nice and tidy that and level really. You see how it levels them up. So again with this one, we want to go just behind this and it's about the same length. Really just use that as a guide. Two pin traps, one, two three, four all together really, just keep it tight there. And again with this, waist at the front, you're going to make a cut diagonal towards, from the eye upwards really. Yeah, like this. And secure that down. It's a good all round pattern this, I mean you can use it for locks, you can use it for rivers, you can use it as a bob fly. So again, plenty of wax on. And take your device away from yourself, get your dubbing, same dubbing. And again make a little noodle. If you hold the back end, pinch it and twist well, once you anchor that first bit on it's generally quite easy from there to form a nice even dubbing, loop, uh, dubbing noodle And if you're happy with that, we're going to take bunch number three. Sometimes, you know, just brush, just brush it up in a bit if you, if you're not sure. And again, cut nice close to the skin. Lift the bunch out. about the same kind of amount as you had the first two times. Do a third. Um, stack it. measure it up with the last piece so you keep them level really and the pin trap you want to put a pin trap in one two three four 
three, four nice tight wraps. And then again, a diagonal cut on this really. And that helps create like a wake in the water. Which sometimes is a good trigger factor for trout. I mean it'll take grayling, it'll even take salmon this. You can tempt all sorts into it. So again, wet on your thread. And take a new little bit. Because it's a highly, highly buoyant fly it is. And then when I'm retrieving it, it'll pull it under a bit and then let it bob back to the surface. Pull it under a bit, let it bob back to the surface. That generally a trigger factor for trout. Okay, now we're going to go for bunch number four. This is three or four. This is pretty much the last bunch, really. So I can lift it from skin and separate a nice little bunch. Same as the other two. And stack it. Some people give it a really good stack in, some people just a little stack. As long as it levels them all up, it, it doesn't matter too much. So again, what we're going to do is level it up. Use your, what you've already got there for a guide. And again, pinch wrap it. One, two, three, four. And this front bit, we're going to take all this and just cut diagonal from the eye. Again, what it does, it call it makes a wake. It gives gives you a wake in water. That does. Put some dubbing on for the last bit here before forming the head. So again, wax. And stick it on your knuckle like that is um, a technique I got off a quite a famous fly tire from Ayrshire. I won't mention no names, but it's a good tip. So I drop a dubbing on there, make a dubbing noodle, and check it up this one on it, it generally isn't too bad from there. Now 
Don't be afraid to come back if you're um, not sure. That's that far in the head then. Sure, you don't tie over your eye. I've done that before now. No, you get a string in there, but I have done that before now. And then what we're going to do here is first of all give it a bit of a brush, just tease a couple of them that have been out. And then take a couple of strands of um, ice, ice dog, and so I just tie them over its head. If you can, just sort of lie them down and give it one, two, three rats, and just fold them backwards like this, put them back over the bottom. And just secure that down and sort of brush it into the into the fur if you like and then at the back just get your scissors and level it all off and we're gonna just whip finish that there Take a little piece of varnish again. You can tidy it up a little with the scissors, Put a dot of varnish on the head. Don't worry about it going too much into the tubing. Uh, trench can keep it away from the tubing. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you can put a, a pin down there after. And there you have it. The said job. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please subscribe. Click the little bell icon. And it'll inform you that any other videos I've got out have been fishing it and uh, tight lines.